Hi, I'm Drew Hutchison, and you're tuned to Local Bias. We come to you from the studios of Greenfield Community Television at 393 Main Street in Greenfield. And today I'm excited to have a friend of mine, a, a recent friend, someone who I've been spending time with making art. And I'm talking about Jackson Williams of uh, Madhouse Multi Arts. Jackson, welcome to the program. Thanks, Drew. And I've, I've enjoyed our Fridays. Um, you've been uh, having an event called Paint and Pour on Fridays. That's right. Though it's not every Friday because it seems like there's such a thing known as inclement weather in New England right. that yes. interferes with that. <laughs> and I'm sure there are also times that uh, you're, oh boy, I don't feel like doing this at 7 o'clock <laughs> on a Friday night. There's other things well, I we try be doing. to we try to be pretty consistent with it, but it's just certain, you know, certain conflicts come up, but, but we do our best to keep it going. So, so yeah. So to that point, now of course I like to. I'm, I'm probably your most consistent person over Definitely, the last yes. few yeah. months, mm -hmm. and um, I want this to continue. Yes, yeah, so but do I don't know that weekly makes the most sense. Yeah, you think so? Yep. I mean, I think I think it's the kind of thing where if it, you know, it's like once we get it to a certain point, then weekly is great, you right. know. But but it's harder to do it weekly when it's before we've gotten it to that point, you know. Right. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, I think it might make sense to go, you know, every other week, maybe something like that to start with. And, and because some of us have other through. lives on Fridays, I just really enjoy. Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah, all of us do. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea of painting when other people are painting, right. I've always loved that yeah. because there's a camaraderie. Even though we're totally. doing something that's individualistic, we're sharing space. You're playing great tunes, mm -hmm. taking requests, <laughs> and um, it's it, it's something that's been taking place at Madhouse Multi Arts, right. which is on Main Street in Greenfield, and you. Are why Madhouse Multi Arts exists? Yeah, uh, I, me and Charlotte, the co Charlotte Triber, the co-founder, um, we we started the the business together. Um, we both graduated Hampshire College the same year, 2020, and uh, we were friends there. Charlotte was in the visual art department, and I was more in, in the music and entrepreneurship departments. And my whole since year one there, I, I took on intro to entrepreneurship, and and from then on, I was focused on that uh, kind of arts economy, arts administration world, and and the, the, my entire time there, I, I developed this business model that started as this thing called the Indie Accelerator, which was like a two month program that I that I tested out with a little bit of. Uh, funding that the college gave me for a project, and then it grew into Madhouse um, as as the as it progressed and as it went through different iterations and changes. And uh, so, all during my time there, I was conducting different kinds of market research and interviews with musicians and artists um, about you know what what the challenges they faced were and what kind of a business I could start that could help um, you know aspiring creatives like myself reach their goals mm -hmm. you know more easily in a world where. There just isn't a whole lot of direction uh, in, in, in terms of that. Well, well, as you probably understand, the creative types mm -hmm. generally are not the entrepreneurial types by their own inclination. Well, I mean, there is a creativity yeah. involved in being an entrepreneur, but it's, a, it's different than making paintings. It's sort of different. I think the distinction that I see is the is the difference between entrepreneurship and and being a business owner, right? Mm -hmm. I think there are actually a lot of artist entrepreneurs and a lot of creative entrepreneurs because entrepreneurship is about um, creating something. It's not necessarily about sustaining something. It's about getting something to a proof of concept, uh, getting it just off the ground, and then from that point forward, if you stick with that that business or whatever your venture is, then you become a business owner and you're oh. no longer, I mean, you're not operating as an entrepreneur anymore. Now you have to, to sustain this thing. And I think that that is maybe a little bit less of something that comes naturally to creatives um, who are maybe a little bit more um, sporadic or there's a word I'm looking for, you know, who are going with their with the ideas that they're excited about. In the right. Moment, and right? that's usually creating something and once right. it's created it leave it to <laughs> right. leave the running to someone that wants to run it right that's um, interesting but then you know there's there's issues with that too if you hand off something that's really um, about supporting a certain community to someone who maybe isn't as aligned with that community or doesn't think the same way then you have issues with that so it's it's tricky I think to find that niche of someone who can can still identify a lot with the people they're trying to serve, but also has the right mindset and skills to, to just um, to be a business owner, you know. Well, and, and, the, and the, the plain fact is that whenever an organization gets shifted over to somebody else, yeah. you know, you build it to a certain point and you hand it off, it doesn't matter who comes in. Right. They're going to go in their direction. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
you hope that it's in alignment with your values. Totally. But what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are are going to be different than yours. And so there yep. are some things that they will do that will improve upon what you are doing. Right. But they're likely to be some losses as well. I mean, it just seems inevitable. Yeah. And so. Yeah. Well, and it's it's just you know the the challenge of like. Of, of getting more people involved to start with, right? right? I mean, there's a lot of arts organizations that I've that I've been connecting with, connected with, and that I've, I've people I've spoken to in these organizations. That you know, the more you talk to these people, you you realize that it's really just a little group mm -hmm. of a couple people who just really care about it that keep it alive in right. almost every situation, and you know. Well, it's kind of like herding cats because <laughs> the, the artists are off in their own little niches everywhere. Mm -hmm. They don't all know each other. They have right. conglomerations that. You know, work together. Totally. But as far as coming under one umbrella, I mean, I know that Lisa Duvall's been working on the, I think, the creative economy, and, and uh, there have been efforts made to provide um, hubs for resources, for right. information, for uh, networking, mm -hmm. and yet it seems like there's still so much more that has to be done. Totally, yeah. And there's inherent challenges with, with trying to accomplish that. I think the reason that, that we as creative uh, communities and creative organizations tend to form these smaller like bubbles, mm -hmm. I think is because we all take on so much. We, right. all, we all are way in over our head trying to do something because it's important to us, uh, you know, not necessarily because it, it's good money or anything like that. And that's a tremendous you know, uh, amount that you take on. And so looking outside of your own world that you've created that you're trying to keep going to the other bubbles that are out there and saying, oh, what, what can I, how can I, I work with these people? What can mm -hmm. we do together? What's the bigger picture outside of this stuff that I'm dealing with every day? Um, who are the other creatives out there who are, who are in a similar situation? It's, it's hard to separate yourself from your immediate situation um, Well, the fact is, you, that, you, you know? yourself, the amount of energy you have, the amount of time that you have mm -hmm. is a limited resource. Of course, yeah. And so you can't be all things to all people. Right. But you are reaching out to different groups. I mean, you have the graphic zine thing that you did at the beer place. Yeah, we did. Uh, well, yeah, we did that once there, which was really cool. And we, we did it uh, um, we, for a while at, at Madhouse. And, okay, so uh, what is this particular program? I mean, are you continuing this, the graphic? Yeah, so that was called Zine Club, Zine Club um, okay. and it's been it's been on hiatus for a little while, um, just because we've been trying to kind of make trying to grow, um, you know, Paint and Pour and, and the Arts Walk and some of these other things that we've been, you know, we're talking about time as a resource. We've been trying to focus our, our efforts and time on those. In Arts um, Walk, I mean, the last Arts Walk was during a storm, so right, there was no yeah, Arts it's, Walk. It's very tricky in the winter, uh, especially with that with that one. But um, but yeah, we really like Scene Club, and I think we have ideas of it coming back in the future as like more than just zines. Mm -hmm. um, you know, zines are like homemade um, publications, homemade right, magazines. Right. And uh, we feel like there's a lot of other kind of paper craft, creative um, things that could be kind of put in with that, like collage and origami and, you know, all kinds of, you know, journal creating, book binding, all kinds of things like that that I think could kind of be brought under under one umbrella and maybe reach some more audiences and people with, with a wider variety of interests that sort of relate in that way. Um, and so that's sort of what I envision it coming back as at some point. Okay. And in the meantime, you are hosting also a music event at Hawks and Reed that's right, yeah. Performing Arts Center in Greenfield. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what's that? Yeah, so that's the Madhouse Local Concert Series. Um, I, I work there at Hawks and Reed. Um, that's my sort of my day job. And uh, so I, we were able to, you know, kind of create this collaborative um, monthly concert series there that happens the first Sunday of every month. And it features four local acts every month. Um, and we, we basically kind of tailor um, each one of the shows around a certain genre. Mm -hmm. and, and it kind of fluctuates. Sometimes it's indie rock. Sometimes it's singer-songwriter. Sometimes it's a little more punk, folk punk, folk rock. You know, th those are kind of the genres. That it's, it's usually one of those. Mm -hmm. But I'm, we were always uh, excited to try to, you know, move in a new direction. We did some, like, more, more like a noise experimental one one mm -hmm. time. And so every now and then... We'll, I could do we'll the throw. noise yeah. experimental yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there's a big scene for that around here. There, there is. So. I actually, I played a kind of a noise show once. And oh, yeah? It was a lot of fun. Yeah, totally. Um, but that was basically because I'm not that proficient on the, the instrument mm -hmm. that I was playing. Mm -hmm. 
Um, well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a great opportunity to experiment and well, to do is. things you wouldn't otherwise do, you know. So, so yeah, I, I, loved, I love the fact that you, that you have art involved and mm -hmm. you yourself are an artist. And did I drop my mic? No, I think my okay. couple were good. <laughs> okay. It's a local cable. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's, it's where people in the witness protection program go. Right. So, so they won't be seen. <laughs> No, nobody will find out where he is. He's a local cable. <laughs> yeah. um, so the, you went to ha Hampshire College. What, right. what drew you to Hampshire College? Did you? Because you didn't already have this idea of entrepreneurial mixing with the arts back then, did you? Not really. Um, so uh, I guess yeah. Before Hampshire, uh, instead of high school, I went to North Star uh, Self Directed Learning Center. I, when I went there, it was in Hadley, mm -hmm. a big beautiful brick building there. It's since moved to Sunderland, which is really cool. I love Sunderland. I think it's a cool place for it to be based now. But um, when I was there, it was you know North Star is really about being self directed and creating your own curriculum and and kind of exploring all the things that you think maybe you'd be interested in that. So you mm -hmm. really get to get a sense of like, you know, I, I feel like maybe for some people who go through a more traditional schooling system, there are avenues that you never really got a chance to even know if you would have liked doing. And North Star really is a good way if you're the kind of person who wants to really make sure you, you explore the different things that are, that, that are options for you. You have to be really um, intrinsically motivated, though. You can't be yeah, looking for do. someone else to you guide do. you because you're blazing your own path. Right. Well, I mean, you're not entirely alone. There's, you, have, you have your um, guidance, guidance people who help you sort of put together. The, you know, they show you, oh, these are the classes that are going on this this year these are the people who can do tutoring with you and stuff and they, they, they it's comprehensive they help you you know put it all together but but it is you'll get the most out of it if you if you are you know, you kind of know what you want or you have ideas of what you're interested in and um, you enjoy um, you know kind of blazing your own trail I trail I think it is it does it works best for those kinds of people and um, so while I was there I had heard about Hampshire and some of my friends who had uh, graduated from North, from North Star before I did had, had gone that route so I'd visit them on campus so I got, got a feel for what the place was like mm -hmm. and and met some people there and and that's you know and so so I, I liked it there but I, I didn't originally think oh I'm gonna go to college because when I left North Star music had been my main thing that's where I really got into songwriting and guitar and um, and I wanted to be a, a professional musician. I wanted right. to just make money that way, which you know, I've lost money that way. Oh yeah, I, they, we all do. <laughs> and of course, that was you know what I heard from everyone around me since day one of like you know that it was just not it was just not you know it's not uh, impossible because right, you and I probably right. I mean I know I have friends who are professional musicians. They totally. make their livelihood as musicians, right. but they are five percent of my friends who play music. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's the thing is that I think everybody has. It's it, there's such a spectrum of these kinds of things, you know, and I think that our, our often our parents and a lot of people in our lives aren't necessarily looking at it with that degree of detail. You know, they're, they're thinking in terms of like, well, it's either going to be a career or it isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, it's either going to be you can make your money doing this and this is the life you're going to have or it isn't. Um, but the reality of the world we live in now is especially even more so than in our in my people my age's parents generation um, is that it's you really have to piece together your life with a lot of different a lot of different avenues you know well it used to be that people like for instance here in greenfield there yeah. were a certain subset of people knew that they were likely to get a job at greenfield tap and die or mm -hmm. millard's falls tool company mm -hmm. or one of the other right you know places that no longer exist right. the idea of working for one company that was very attractive to people at one time but yeah. you know, you would have a pension, for instance. Mm -hmm. Well, this that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, it, I've had s several careers. Right, right. And um, I'm actually grateful that I've been kind of pushed out of some careers, and g found others because I've grown. But exactly, it's it's yeah. difficult it and is. it's uh, it's a challenge. And and that's the whole the whole kind of the the messiness of everything is that we need to be challenged right. sometimes in order to grow. When mm -hmm. things are just going along, we. We're not, if we're not challenged, we... Right. I mean, when you're just put in a lane, when there's just a lane that you can get in, right, right. You're, you're, that, your mind is going to be shaped by that, and, and it's going to be shaped in the same way that everybody else who got in that lane's mind is going to be shaped, and there's, a, there's advantages and disadvantages to that. But I think get, just getting back to the, the music and, right. and wanting to go into the, in that direction, I, I think from the research that I did at Hampshire, the interviews I mentioned before when I was developing my business model, I spoke to a lot of other pe people my age who, like, who wanted to be musicians and one capacity or another and one of my biggest takeaways was the variety of of 
things that people wanted for music. You know, some people were musicians, but when I got, got them and sat down to interview them, I found, oh, they actually want to open a recording studio. And okay. of course they play music, but they want to record other mus musicians' music as well. And, and that's the avenue they want to go. And other people, you know, maybe they wanted to have their music in film and, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, licensing. Right scores, right? Uh, maybe they wanted to teach music. Maybe they didn't want to make any money for music, but they wanted to do it. They wanted to spend their time on it and find a way to fit that into their lives, mm -hmm. not as a, as a a money-making endeavor, but as just something that was important to them. And, Which is pretty much what I've done. Right, right. And, and people, are, like I said, that's a spectrum as well. Maybe you, you play X paid gigs in a month and you get a little money from that, mm -hmm. and, but, but not, uh, not all the things you do with it are like that. And maybe you're really serious about it and, and you just, you know, you, you are trying to climb the ladder to get to the point where you have a record deal and you're, you're really making money from they it. Do, and do and they there do, are people who do that. They, you know? they still have record deals. <laughs> they, they do. I mean, it's, it's a different industry than it was, it for sure. A, right. Um, but, you know. It's the, the merchandising. Right. Merchandise. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Merchandising and, you know, I mean, the whole YouTube is a whole other avenue of ways to, to commodify what you do as a musician and, you know, maybe you're, you mix your personality with it, so it becomes sort of a more of an influencer type situation. There's just so many ways to, to be a musician in this world that some of which are, are things that can ultimately make you money, some of which it's a little bit less, and, and everybody's got a different uh, direction that they want to go in within that. Right. And, no one really told me that before I went to Hampshire. No one, I never had those kinds of conversations. I was always just kind of having conversations of like, it was just always right down to like, okay, well, how do you make money? How do you make money? And, and, and you know, the, the, um, the depth of it, the detail of it was kind of lost. And it was very discouraging, I think. And that's, um, I, that was really hard for me right after North Star for, for quite a while. Um, and ultimately, I ended up uh, deciding to go back to college after spending about a year or so just working and trying to start a music career because it wasn't happening because I had a day job and mm -hmm. I would get back from work and, and was completely, you know, emotionally drained and just it just didn't click, you know. Right. Um, so I went to college to try and just figure something out. I didn't really have I was just like, I, I need to, to, you know, figure something out to, to make this possible. And maybe I'll meet people at college who are dealing with similar things and. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think that entrepreneurship was really on my mind at that point. But once I got there, I, I was approaching college m with much more of a sense of, like, I I'm doing this because I feel like I need to, to, to be able to build a life that I want. It wasn't, you were making an investment in exactly, yourself. Exactly. Yeah, it wasn't so much like, oh, you know, you graduate high school, go to college. That's right. just what you do. So I was going into it with that mindset. And then when I saw Intro to Entrepreneurship and those classes, I was like, oh, well, well, I'm learning. I mean, that's what an entrepreneurship class is. You're learning how to make money without working for someone else. Right. And that just made sense to me <laughs> with yep. my situation. So I went to it and... Uh, and then I discovered how creative entrepreneurship is and, and how just how many different directions you can go with. I mean, it's any industry, it's, it's any, any, all kinds of different business models that you can try, things that people have never tried before. And that's, that's what it boils down to, really, that what the, the passion of it is for most entrepreneurs, I find, is, is just doing something new. And you also, you're meeting a need. There is right. a need for a social culture. social need, exactly, yeah. We don't have enough culture in our, in, uh, I mean, people think they have culture, but we don't have nearly enough. Yeah. <laughs> and we, don't, we don't, well, we don't support it the way that other countries do, for instance. Definitely. So the yeah. fact that you're doing it this way, you're raising grants, you have investors that help you, you have a business plan. Right. Right. And so yeah. what, so I, I suppose what's next for Madhouse at this point while you're still in the entrepreneurial phase? Yeah. Well, I, uh, I think we're at a point now where a lot of it is kind of developing the space, um, figuring out. So you rent rooms right now right. for uh, primarily artists, but also mm -hmm. you want to do audio. We do, yep. yep. We have plans of, of having a rehearsal space uh, in the building at some point, and uh, we're figuring out what the, you know, what's going to make the most sense of how we, how we make that happen and what, what's, what room in the building we use and how we do the soundproofing of that and, and the different kinds of, uh, you know, the nitty gritty of it. But yeah, we definitely want to have a rehearsal space in the building where musicians are practicing. Um, and that was always a part of the business model that I had at, at Hampshire even, was that there would be rehearsal studio recording type space and there would be artist personal art studios and those would be, those would make up the bedrock of the income streams, you know, of the business model that would actually make it feasible. Right. And then we would have programming and, and different kinds of events and things on top of that that would build the community, um, which 
meets a lot of, would ultimately meet a lot of the social needs that we're trying to address. And that community also helps us with our bottom line of having that community of artists and people who could potentially use our other services. Uh, so are you around. networking with the different local art organizations, including, you know, Greenfield um, mm -hmm. uh, Community College and Greenfield High School has an art program? Uh, We'd like to. We haven't really uh, broken into that yet, but we've definitely been thinking, you know, I, I, we're definitely aware that, like, there's a big need in Greenfield right now for after-school programs, and, you know, I think that um, there's there's some arts and music um, activities that maybe young people aren't getting quite as much as they could be from from, from the schools, and, mm -hmm. and maybe there's more that we could offer to sort of supplement some of that. I mean, I, I worked for four years when I was at Hampshire at the Northampton Community Music Center, uh, Northampton, and that whole, found, that whole organization was started basically by parents and the community in response to some arts programs being cut, music programs being mm -hmm. cut at those schools. Right. Um, and and that totally took off, and you know that's been a really uh, awesome thing going on there for ever since. Um, so I, I see us as being a similar kind of, you know, having a, a similar niche here in Greenfield, and maybe we can kind of grow into that and, and do more of that kind of programming. Because one of the things that I, I feel is important or instructive for, for instance, local economies, mm -hmm. restaurants are in competition for diners. Right. And yet the more restaurants you have in a community, the better they all do. Right. And right. this, for instance, Art Space mm -hmm. down on uh, Mill Street is a, a great organization. Yeah. And there's, I just think that there's ways that if there's something that you do really well, yeah. and there's something that they don't do really well but they need done, mm -hmm. then you work together. And if there's something exactly. they do really well that you don't do real well, well, then they can do that part of it. To the extent that we can leverage all our talents right. and overcome our weaknesses because we're, yeah. we're actually cooperating. Exactly, yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's a higher level of entrepreneurship as opposed yeah. to the capitalism. There's a piece of pie, it's this big, and I'm getting as much as I can of that pie. Totally. Let's make the pie bigger for everyone. Yeah, yeah. the, the name of my uh, Division Three project, which is the final project you have at Hampshire, uh, which was the business model for Madhouse, like the final business model that I wrote up, it was titled um, Collective Independence. And so that was sort of you know highlighting the philosophy of the whole thing, which is that, you know, we, as creatives, but also just at, even as in a, in a more macro scale, as like organiz arts organizations, um, you know, we all have our own avenue that we're going to walk down, and we're trying. Our goal is to be independent, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I think that one of the best ways, the best way to get there is to use the resources and the connections and uh, the community that's around you. So it's sort of this, it, it seems kind of counterintuitive, but it's, it's, I think it's like we become more independent when we learn to work with each other. Right. Um, and uh, like I said, I think that's true in terms of arts organizations as well as artists individually. Um, because isn't it exciting how much amazing art there is out there? Of course, yeah. I mean, I'm blown yeah. away all the time. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we, it's, it's awesome. Uh, we always get a lot of submissions. Uh, you know, for, uh, we have a form on our website where artists can submit to be uh, featured in the Arts Walk, and we always have those coming in during the month, and it's cool to see just such a variety of different pieces from local creatives and uh, to, to be able to meet those people and, and bring them into the community. So. And, of course, with Arts Walk, you have a dozen local businesses that have offered their space for, as a gallery. Yeah. Um, for one night a month. Right, right. And of course the art often hangs up a lot longer than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and, and it's like some people will, some of those those locations bring their own artists in, who, people who they know, and, and that's always awesome for to, to sort of take that initiative and, and bring, and combine our networks, um, you know, to, to make this event, uh, you know, everything that it can be. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just been really awesome uh, working on that project and seeing it grow um, and hearing more interest from the community. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to the warmer months so we can kind of get more people out on, the, out on the sidewalks again and have more of the out, outside events going on. Um, we'd like to have some music going on, you know, in different areas around town outside mm -hmm. and things like that. So, so by the way, so if someone wants to get in touch with you, you work a lot of course, at Hawks and Reed. Right, so right, yeah. I don't want anyone to bother you while you're working. <laughs> but what's the best way to get in touch with you? Yeah, um, well, so we have um, our contact info on, on the website, on our madhousemultiarts.com uh, website. So that's that's a perfectly good way. You'll be able to reach me through through the website. Um, 
And yeah, if you if you want to reach me about um, like more Hawks and Reed related things, if you're a local musician who wants to perform, uh, maybe in the Madhouse concert series or something like that, uh, my 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 email there is jwhawksbooking at gmail dot com. So okay. you can reach out through that. So now Hawks and Reed has three different performance spaces, or is it? Yeah, three different rooms. Uh, well, so I guess it would be four technically. Okay, You've got the loft, the, the perch, or the perch, yeah, the, the perch. ballroom. The wheelhouse, which is sort of the the speakeasy downstairs yeah. kind of basement venue, and then uh, the Pushkin Gallery across the street. Oh, the Pushkin's the being yeah. used. Yeah, yeah, we do shows in there sometimes. Yeah, usually more like acoustic. Oh boy, uh, because the stuff. acoustics yeah. in there, yeah. are, you can't, can't have a band that's too loud. Right, it won't work. Right, it's, I mean it's fantastic for the right kind of thing, but right. it, you, you do have to choose it <laughs> correctly. Actually, the very first um, show I ever shot myself. Mm -hmm. was there. It was Jeff D'Antona and uh, Micaiah McCraven was on drums. It was mm. an excellent show. Wow. Anyway. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it, it, the years fly by. And I don't yeah. know whatever happened to that. It was on, I, you know, it went on GCTV, but mm -hmm. I lost my copy. Oh, yeah. But well, that, we might have one somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> well, you never know. Who knows? <laughs> um, I, but I know that we're, we're coming near the end of the interview because mm -hmm. I can just sense it with my spidey sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, I've been doing this a while. <laughs> I've, I've been, so I've, is there any message that you want the viewers to hear. I mean, is there some, mm -hmm. what 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 does the, what does the viewer need to do? Yeah, well, I think um, I guess I would. I always like to try to reach out to people who are, were maybe myself several years ago, right? Okay. At a time and when you went to Greenfield High School, right? And, well, oh, no, you I, went to North Star. Right? Yeah, I went to North Star. Yeah, that was where I was okay, for the right. high school years. But you were from Greenfield. I will. Yeah, I lived in Greenfield for quite a while. I've lived in a lot of different towns in Western Mass. Okay. We moved around every couple of years, so I've gone to a lot of different of uh, the public elementary schools. But um, after that was when I went to North Star. Okay. So, so but know. but yeah. So I don't know if you're if you're a kind of a young aspiring creative and you feel. Like it's you're, it's hard to find a way to connect with the arts community, you know, in, in Western Mass. Um, you're not alone. You know, I think I, I remember that feeling, and I think there's definitely a lot of other people out there who have been there. And it's sort of like you know, it's there's so many things that are scary about it. It's scary to to go out and and try to just introduce yourself to people. It's scary to try to share your art or whatever. Well, when thing you're sharing you do, your, your art, your you're sharing yourself. And exactly, who wants yeah. to be criticized or have someone yeah. think their art is awful? And if in, in, in this kind of a scene, you just have to, you, you have to be your own you know, proponent and go out there. There isn't a place where you can go and be like, hey, I do this thing. Does anybody want to like, get to know me? Like, it's just, right. You just have to, you have to overcome that. And I guess I, guess I would say, um, you know, it's, there's a lot. It's gonna. It's gonna be easier than you're expecting it to be. Okay. <laughs> well, on that sure. note, we have to wrap up the All right. show. So it's easier than you're expecting. It's easy. <laughs> you heard it from the expert. Okay. It's easier than you expected it to be. We just gotta do it. Do art. Be an artist. I'm so thank thankful for coming on. Yeah. Thanks, it's, Drew. Thanks and for And I'll having see you again soon. Of course. I, I'm drawn to painting. If yeah. You, if you want to ever harass me, Friday nights <laughs> at Madhouse Multi Arts, I'm often there painting. Yeah. So. Yep. Um, Thank you for joining us. Take care.